I'm going to show you how we can subscribe to real-time events from Superbase so we can keep our UI in sync with changes to the database. Now this does require us to have Superbase Auth configured to use cookies, so if you don't know what that means, I recommend you click that card above and get it implemented. All right, let's get into it. Here I have my beautifully styled to-do app that's listing out all of my to-dos. And this data is revalidated or updated anytime I sign out. And so you'll see, I can no longer see any of my to-dos. And then if I sign in, my to-dos are back. I can also add a new to-do to this list, like fix TypeScript definitions, which we need to do throughout our application. We'll get to that soon, but you'll see that new to-do has been added to the list. But what if someone else needs to add an item to our list? Let's say we have a super controlling boss who wants to micromanage us by adding to-do items directly to our list. If they were to add a new to-do to reply to my email, and this one's not yet complete, and they assign it to our user. Now, if we go back to our version of this application, we're not actually seeing that new to-do, and it's not going to show up on our list until we revalidate that data. So again, until we sign out, or we add a new to-do, or we just refresh the page. So let's subscribe to those changes in the database so we can update our UI immediately. So if we have a look at our application, we're fetching those to-dos from Superbase, and then we're iterating over them to display each to-do. So let's take this rendering logic, and we're going to move it to a new component called real-time to-dos. And this is going to take a prop for to-do, which is going to be set to our list of to-dos that we got from Superbase here. And now we need to actually create this component. So under app, we're going to create a new file called realtime-todos.tsx. And since we're going to be doing clienty things like subscribing to real-time events, this one needs to be a client component. So let's add the use space client string at the top of our file. And now we can export a default function for real-time to-dos. This will take our to-dos prop, which we're going to very naughtily set to any, but hey, I added a to-do to fix our TypeScript definitions, so we'll get to it. But for now, we just want to return that rendering logic for our to-dos, and TypeScript wants us to commit sins again, so let's say this one is any, and we need to import our to-do component. So that's coming in from dot slash to-do. Now we can go back to our page.tsx and import this new component from dot slash real-time dash to-dos. And if we're feeling really good, we can remove that unused import for our to-do. And so now back in the browser, this should look exactly the same. Let's say we replied to that email, we can click it and it will disappear from our list. And so let's set up that real-time subscription. So back over in our real-time to-dos component, we're going to need a Superbase client. And so we can create that here by calling the create client component client function, which comes in from our auth helpers package. We then need a use effect, which comes in from React. And this is going to take a function, which we want to call when our component mounts. So we pass it an empty dependency array. Now in this callback function, we want to get a channel from Superbase by calling channel and giving it a name. This can be anything. So in this case, I'm gonna call it real time to do's. We then say we want to do something on Postgres underscore changes. And the naming for this one is important. This needs to be Postgres underscore changes or lowercase. We then give it a configuration object to say what we want to listen for. So in this case, the event is star. So we want to listen to inserts, updates, and deletes. The schema we want to listen to is public and the table is to do's. Now we can pass it a callback function, which we want to run when this event occurs. And so this means something in the database has changed. And so essentially we want to go and revalidate our data or essentially in our server component, we want to go up to Superbase and ask for all of the to do's again. And so the way we can do that is with a router. So we can get an instance of our router by calling the use router hook, which comes in from next slash navigation. Make sure you're using this navigation one, not router. And now in our callback function, we just want to call router dot refresh. After our callback, we want to chain on a dot subscribe. And then to clean up this subscription, let's return an arrow function, which calls superbase dot remove channel and pass it our channel from superbase. And our use effect now has an external dependency on Superbase as well as the router. So let's add those to the dependency array. And if we go back to our application and refresh and then emulate our boss adding a to-do to our to-do list, we can see that to-do is in the database, but back over in our application, we're not seeing it in our list. So what's going on here? We're actually really, really close. We just need to tell our Superbase instance that we want to be told about those events. So back over in our Superbase dashboard, we can go to database and then replication and under Superbase real time, click zero tables and then enable this for the to do's table. Now back over in our application, let's refresh and we see our new to do. So let's emulate the boss adding yet another one and back over in our application, it's automatically appeared in our list without us needing to refresh. Yay. Now something to call out here is if you have a highly dynamic app, 
like a chat app, for example, and you have lots of users sending lots of messages, everyone's devices are automatically updating, you probably don't want to go and fetch all the previous messages every time a new message is sent. So check out a link in the description to see how you can do this in a much more performant way. Now something that makes us more performant as devs is having really accurate TypeScript definitions for the data flowing through our application. If you want to learn how to do that, I recommend you check out this video right here where we use the Superbase CLI to introspect our Postgres schema and automatically automatically generate types for our Superbase clients. But until next time, keep building cool stuff.